Well, hello everyone. My name is Ashley Rosary. I am one of the recruiters here at the University of Waterloo. I would like to welcome you to, to today's session for Honors Mathematics. I have my colleague Jordan Hamilton joining us today. He is a lecturer uh, here in the undergrad math and we are just excited to speak with you about uh, the number of majors and pathways that we have within Honors Mathematics. So another thing that I'd like to mention is that we have a number of experts joining us in the chat today. As you're watching today's live uh, presentation and live session, we um, encourage you to head on over to the chat and ask any questions that you may have. Alrighty, Jordan, so can we get started in asking some questions about honors mathematics? So Jordan, what makes the faculty of math so special here at Waterloo? What are some key factors that are um, that students should consider when they are considering um, the University of Waterloo? Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, that's a great question, actually. The I'm, I'm glad you used the word special. It turns out actually that the University of Waterloo is, is North America's only dedicated faculty of mathematics. It's the only place you can go and get a Bachelor of Mathematics degree or a Master's of Mathematics degree in North America. Uh, we have a huge range of courses. Over 500 different courses are offered in math, stats, and CS every year. Um, it's a place where you can go in first year. You don't have to already know exactly what you're doing. Of course, it's okay if you do, but uh, you can go and get the fundamentals of your first year in your first year. You can take a wide range of courses, and the first year courses are designed to prepare you for your upper year courses anyway, no matter which direction you go. Uh, normally people will declare their major after their first year, but there are some entrance programs where you start with your major in 1A. Perfect. Uh, also, uh, just as a, a side note, uh, our, un our actuarial science program is actually accredited by the Canadian Institute for Actuaries. So that means that you can be exempt from several of their exams if you do your ACSI degree here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jordan. Um, I guess I have another question. Since you talked about um, the fact that we have such a large offering of courses and a number of majors, I'm assuming students want to know when and how do they choose their major and what's the best way to figure out which major may be right for them? This is a really common question we get actually in the advising office. Uh, I don't know what I like to do. What should I do? What should my major be? And what we always tell students is don't focus in on the major, focus in on the career that you want. I mean, university, no matter where you go, it's a stepping stone towards your larger career. So you should try to choose a program that aligns with your career goals, that allows you to do what you wanna do. Now, that might be a daunting task and it's okay if you don't know exactly what you wanna do coming in to your program. Uh, you can always change your mind later. Like I said, lots of students declare in second year and some even declare in third year and you can always change as well. Uh, your first year is for getting this wide range of um, math experience so that you can make a better choice for what you wanna do in the future. And when you're here and you do some, some math programs and you think, wow, that's really cool. What careers can I get from that? And then we can help you answer those questions too. And then that might change your mind. I, I know it did for me when I was in first year, I thought I would do one thing and I changed to a completely different career uh, after that. That's perfect. You know, it's interesting because here in the faculty of math, we have some exceptional students. We have students who not only want to have a major, but they also want to have a minor. And I'm assuming that we have a number of students who are interested in pursuing a minor as well. So can you speak on um, what options are available to students if they would like to have a minor? Uh, yeah, that's a, a really good question. Actually, there's a lot of customization that can go into your degree. Um, some programs allow you to have a major and a minor, or you can even choose two majors or a major and a joint honors, which is sort of somewhere between a major and a minor that you can add on. So depending on the level of specialization you want to get apart from your main degree, you can choose that too. Uh, specifically for minors, you can do a minor in actuarial science, uh, applied math, combinatorics and optimization, computational mathematics, computer science, pure mathematics and statistics. Perfect, thank you so much, Jordan. Another question that we get from um, prospective students um, when they're trying to decide if they're gonna come to Waterloo is what are some of their some of our more competitive programs that we have here in the faculty and what 
factors impact whether they can choose those majors, whether they can declare those majors. Can you speak on that? Yeah, so uh, most of our majors are not competitive in that if you get a certain average and you've completed a certain number of courses, you can declare that major. Jordan, one question that we often get when we're speaking to prospective students who are interested in computer science is, or and they receive an offer from Honors Mathematics, they'll wonder, is there any chance that I can switch into um, or transfer into computer science? So actually, yes, the computer science program is one of those programs that I mentioned that has a 1A entry plan. If you enter in 1A, you'll be in what's called the Bachelor of Computer Science or BCS program, but you can apply when you're taking Math 136. So typically in your 1B term, you can apply to computer science honors. So the honors math version of computer science, which is very close to the same thing. Now I should mention that the, it is competitive and they don't take very many students every term. The number of students they take varies, but it's not a very big number. So it is extremely competitive. Uh, if you have the grades to get in and you have, and you, and you get in great, but if you don't, just remember there are other options available to you. You can take a CS minor, even if you don't get into the major, and then you can add that onto your degree and expand it that way. Or you could look at other major options like computational math and combinatorics and optimization. So those are both uh, plans that are related to computer science, but different in their own way. So even if you don't get into CS, there are still other options available to you, uh, but know that CS is a very difficult plan to get into. And same goes for data science. Jordan, thank you so much for that answer. We often find that students um, are quite interested in computer science, but for the students who you know may not be able to transfer into computer science or may not be admitted into the computer science program for their 1A term, they may have the question of what courses can I take within computer science while still being admitted into honors mathematics? So can you speak on what courses are available to students who are admitted into honors mathematics but have a keen interest in computer science? Yeah, there are courses that are open to uh, general math students and not computer science students. There's more than 10 of them actually. Uh, just looking at the list here, there's a few like um, introduction to symbolic computation, logic and computation, data types and structures, algorithmic problem solving, which is great to, to have uh, no matter what your degree is, designing functional programs, elementary algorithm design, things like that, which are more broad and would apply maybe to your degree and your major a little bit more than if you were just a computer science student. Thank you for that. Um, I guess my next question, now that we've spoken on our programs that we have here within Honors Mathematics, um, the next question that I have is what type of co-op jobs can students um, that are admitted into Honors Mathematics look forward to? Can you speak on um, some of the opportunities that we're seeing coming out of our um, Honors Mathematics uh, department? Sure. So the co-op jobs, there's, there's a massive range of co-op jobs that are uh, offered on Waterloo Works every term. Um, just going through a few of these, uh, there's actuarial analysts, data analysts, software developers, web developers, access control administrators, instructional support assistants. We've hired a few of those this term especially. Uh, quality assurance automation developers, quality assurance analysts, data and recording analysts, risk analysts, there's uh, chances to get into education in the tutorial center. Um, there's, there's a lot of, of variation. And again, it depends heavily on your degree. Now, I do wanna mention that you should temper your expectation. In your 1A term, you may not get something that's related to what you'll be doing after you graduate right away. Don't forget that you're gonna be competing with the third and fourth year students that have a lot more experience than you. So your jobs in the first or second co-op work terms might be a bit more general. And that's totally normal as you build those relationships with companies and as you get more experience, uh, then you can look forward to getting the more specialized jobs in your upper years. Another question that we often get is from students who may not be interested in co-op. We know that here at Waterloo, we are known for co-op, but we also find that we have students who are not interested in co-op. And so Jordan, can you speak to what the experience is for a student who is not enrolled into a co-op based program? Um, can you speak on specifically on what their summers look like? That's a great question. Uh, one of the most obvious things, I guess, would be to take a few extra courses. You could turn it into a study term or just take a couple courses to lighten the load on future terms. 
Another option would be to uh, do a research internship with a professor on campus. You could uh, explore some different things. Maybe if you were interested in academics, you could look into researching with a professor for a term. Uh, you could look into the EDGE certificate, which is an experiential certificate program that helps you transition into the workforce by looking at things like building an, an excellent resume or a cover letter and things like that, uh, exploring different career paths that you can take, as well as getting experience in the workforce. Uh, and if you aren't maybe interested in those things, you could look into traveling. That's a great term to go traveling or volunteering. There's lots of places to volunteer your time. Uh, so there's, there's lots of options open to you for your non-study uh, terms. Awesome, thanks so much, Jordan. And my next question, um, since we've discussed co-op and we've kind of given students an idea of what they can look forward to with regards to co-op, can you speak on some of the career outcomes that we're seeing coming out of our um, faculty of math, more specifically uh, coming out of our students coming out of honors mathematics? That, that's a tough question because it'd be easier to say what careers aren't our students getting. We're getting, you know, so many different variations of jobs. When I hear back from students that were in my students in the past, it goes all the way from, you know, doing my master's and PhD and eventually getting into research to working in like practical research fields, lab fields. It might sound weird to say like biology and things like that. We have actual biology labs in the math faculty for our bioinformatics uh, and applied math and things like that to, um, you know, actuarial science statistics, working for large companies or small companies as actuaries and statisticians. Um, computer science jobs are obviously in high demand. At some point, I can't remember how many years ago, but someone asked the question, how many uh, jobs or how many students do you think if we produce really high quality computer science or data scientists, how many jobs are there available to them? And the answer was you couldn't possibly produce enough. So there, there's a lot of uh, variation in, in jobs that you can get. And like I said, when you start and you get into your second and maybe third year, start thinking about the career that you want and build your degree to fit that career that you wanna get. If you want stats, great, but if you want statistics, but maybe you're interested in biostatistics or you're interested in statistics with a look at maybe how it would be applied to pure math or something, you can always combine those degrees together and, and go that direction. Thank you so much, Jordan, for answering that question. We often get students who are wondering what can they do with their math degree? Um, how can they apply their math skills into the workforce? And so your answer hopefully will answer some of those students' questions. I do have one other question with regards to supports that are available to students. So can you speak on the supports that we have that are available to students within the faculty of math? Uh, speaking of supports outside of just in the class supports, there's the tutorial center where you can go and there are people available almost all the time. So I think this term we're running from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, all day, every day of the week, so Monday to Friday. And you can drop in and ask those people questions. And there's also specialized tutors for all of your courses where you can drop in and talk to a tutor that's just focusing on the course you're taking. And they can help you one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting, depending on um, what's going on that day uh, with questions there. We have academic advisors, I'm one of those, that you can ask any question about your academics, questions about how to declare majors, questions about what you need to do to declare a certain major. If you have questions, maybe you struggled in a course, getting some advice there. Academic advisors are the place to go. And um, I should mention all these things I'm listing here are available online as well as in person when we go back. Uh, student clubs and organizations, those are still going on, even though it's a, a virtual world right now. You can get involved in the clubs and, and organizations that you think that you would enjoy. Campus wellness and health services. Uh, you can get, uh, you can still talk to a nurse or a doctor if you have questions and you can book appointments virtually and go in on your scheduled time. There's counseling services, accessibility services, um, the mental health well-being, and if you have any specific needs, you can get them met as well. So there's, there's a ton of support offered to you even in this virtual time. And of course, this is all applicable to the non-virtual time as well. And also there's a program that MathSoc is now starting up, a peer mentorship program where upper year students will connect with first year students and kind of get them acclimated to the University of Waterloo. 
Thank you so much, Jordan. You know, one of my favorite things to discuss is the supports that we have for our current students, but we also have supports for our prospective students. So in today's um, live, uh, virtual open house. We have uh, a number of experts who are here, who are excited to answer all of your questions. So this is the last question that we'll be answering in, the, in today's session. But for the remainder of the virtual open house, we encourage you to head on over to our booth as we have a number of experts who are there to answer any and all of your questions. We also have a number of other sessions um, going on throughout the day. And lastly, my favorite session that we have going on today is the fact that we're going to have a live Q&A with our current students, um, whether those students are international students or local students here um, in the Ontario area. And so we're looking forward to connecting with you. We encourage you to stay tuned and stay connected with us throughout the remainder of today's virtual open house. For those of you who may need to exit and still want to connect with us, I encourage you to shoot us an email or connect with us on any of our um, social media channels as we are active and looking to connect with prospective students. Again, thank you to Jordan for joining us and answering all of our questions. We hope that these questions and answers um, help you make your decision um, about whether or not you want to come to Waterloo. And again, thank you to everyone that joined us and we're looking forward to connecting with you.